What's up, good data friends? It's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. Now, a lot of people keep asking me what tools and what skills they need in order to become a data scientist or a data analyst or get a job within the data environment. The challenge with this question now is that different companies use different tools and require different skills. Hence, it's very difficult to get a general answer on what tools or what skills you need to learn. Therefore, I created this data team's skills matrix where I try to list every possible skill or every possible tool within the data environment. I have broken down this skills matrix into technical skills where we have the programming languages, the interfaces, the cloud technologies, and the visualization tools. Secondly, we have the abilities needed, and this is broken down into data analytics and data science teams and engineering and database management teams. Then we have the non-technical skills, and then we have the advanced skills. And down here, we have everything together. And just to explain you how this works now is that here over in Excel, which is what feeds the Power BI dashboard, we have all the possible teams within data. So we have the data analytics team, the data science, the engineering, the database management, the project and product management, the data architects and the data managers or the heads of all the departments. And what I've done now is that I have tried to put a number from one to five with one being poor knowledge and five being excellent knowledge as a baseline for all these different teams within the data environment. Now, please note that these baselines are based on my experience and also they depend from the individual just because you might get a data analyst with a background in data engineering that knows very well how to write Java or Scala, but in terms of them requiring to know these programming languages in order to do their data analytics work, it's not that high in priority. Right, so the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna go through all of these skills we've listed over here and try to discuss their importance and also compare them with different teams within the data environment. Right, starting with the programming languages, we have SQL, which can be used in order to access data in the databases or clean, transform and manipulate data in the databases. We have Python that can be used in order to clean and transform data and also run machine learning models. We have R, which does the same with Python. We have DAX that can be used in order to aggregate data in dashboards. We have MDX, which can be used in order to manipulate or query data from a data model. We have Spark, which is useful when you want to distribute jobs. And then we have C Sharp, JSON, Java, React, Scala, and Hive. These are languages that the engineers are mostly using when it comes to accessing data from APIs or when they want to develop a new app. And if we look at the visuals in order to compare them in each of the roles, if we go over here and make this bigger, you can see that the data engineers are mostly using Spark, Scala, React, JSON, Java, Hive, C Sharp, some R, some Python. There is a lot of SQL too, but there is overlap where you cannot see it. Then we have the data scientists with the yellow, mostly Python and R, but they are using other languages too. But just because we have overlap, maybe this visual is not the best to represent this. Actually, if we go down to this visual down here, uh, let me resize this because it does this funny thing. There we go. So if we look at programming languages over here, by the way, you can see that SQL is actually the one that is required the most. If we expand SQL, you can see we have a five in data engineers, five in data scientists, then database manager again, a five. Then we have a four for data analysts, a four for architects, and a four for head of data. 
If we expand Python, we can see it's mostly data scientists, data engineers, then data architects, then head of data, and then data analysts. If we look at R, it's mostly going to be data scientists, then some data architects, head of data, and data analysts. Then we have DAX. DAX is mostly used by data analysts, and then data engineers, and data scientists, and database managers, and head of data. So all of them need to know how to use it. And then the rest is less important, but all of these ones are mostly used by data engineers. Right, going back to the file now, we have the data visualization tools. So here we have Power BI, Click, and Tableau, which are very good for dashboarding. And we also have SSRS, which is very good for very large flat files. Finance loves this. So if we look at who is using those the most, if we open the data visualization tools, you can see we have the data scientist and then the data analyst and then some head of data and then some architects. ClickSense, it should be the same. So actually all Power BI, Click and Tableau I have exactly the same because it depends which one your company is using. Maybe they use a different visualization tool. And we also have SSRS, which is mostly used by data analysts. And then we have threes for architects, scientists, and head of data. Right, going back to our file now, we have the interfaces. Again, there might be more interfaces out there that I don't know that the company you're working for is gonna be using. But here I have some of the main ones. We have Excel, which is like the king of tools in the corporate world. Then we have SSMS, so SQL Server Management Studio, in order to write your SQL. Then we have Databricks, which is an environment where you can write distributed SQL or Python or Spark. Then we have Snowflake, Redshift, and BigQuery. So all of these three do the same thing. So Snowflake, you can write distributed SQL. Redshift is from Amazon Cloud. Again, you can write distributed SQL. And BigQuery is from Google, and you can write distributed SQL. They are actually like an SQL server, but on the cloud, and you can write distributed SQL on them. Then we have Jupyter Notebooks, which is where you can write your Python code. We have Azure Store Explorer. So the company you join might have a different storage explorer, but it's important to know how to use these tools. And then we have Azure Data Studio, Visual Studio Code, and Visual Studio 2019. Again, the company you join might have a lot more interfaces, but these are some of the main ones. Now we can go back to our dashboard and compare the different roles. So if we go over here under interfaces, we can make this bigger and we can compare the different interfaces between the different roles. And we can also do this by using our uh, visual down here. So if we go under interfaces, and then we can expand Excel. We can see it's been required a lot by the data analyst, the head of data, data scientists, product managers. So basically everyone needs to know how to use Excel. Then we have Azure Data Studio, Azure Data Explorer, BigQuery, Redshift. These are very similar, but I'm gonna post this dashboard online so you can come here and play yourself and experiment with these visuals. Right, moving on, we have the cloud services. So a lot of the companies are actually migrating their data from on-prem to the cloud, and most likely they're gonna be migrating into one of these three, Azure AWS from Amazon and GCP from Google. And if we compare this into our dashboard now, if we go under visualization tools, and then we expand, sorry, under uh, cloud services, and then we expand AWS. So I actually have the same markings for all three of them because chances are the company you're gonna join or the company you work for is using one of these three. And then in terms of requirements and knowledge, we have the data architects, the data engineers, then the data managers, head of data, and some data analysts and data scientists, and then the product manager. Right, moving on, we have the abilities needed. So we're moving away from the tools now. And here we have the data analytics and data science abilities needed. So the first one we have is clean, transform, and combine data. 
then we have built-in dashboards, then we have automating the processes, machine learning, deep learning, and generating insights. And if we head over into our dashboards now to investigate this more, by the way, I'm using a lot this visual, it's much more interactive than these ones at the top, but they show the same data. So if we come down here and we go to abilities and then we expand the data analytics and data science, the first one we have is clean data. So you can see data analysts and data scientists are the top ones. Then we have head of data and then some data architects with data managers. You can notice that we see head of data a lot and this is because this head of data person is actually going to be a very experienced person that has probably done all of this before in his data career. Then we have generating insights, which is mostly done by analysts and scientists and head of data. Again, they need to know how to read data. Then we have automating the processes. So here we have a lot of architects, scientists, head of data, and then the database manager. Then we have building dashboards, mostly done by scientists and analysts. Then we have machine learning, mostly done by data scientists and deep learning, mostly done by data scientists. We are actually missing here the machine learning engineers, which are the ones that are doing deep learning the most. Okay, moving on, we have the abilities needed for engineering and database management teams. So here we have data modeling for dimensional modeling, the data cleaning, transforming and combining data from the engineer's perspective, building data pipelines, solving problems, data warehousing, and also managing unstructured data. And if we look into our visual now, we can see it's mostly going to be done by engineers, I'm guessing. So data pipelines, we have architects, engineers, and database managers. Then data warehousing, we have data architects again and data managers, and then the data engineer solving problems. We have the architect and the head of data, then the engineers and the database managers. Down here, we have the engineers and the database managers. Then data modeling, we have the engineers, then some architects and some database manager. And then unstructured data, we have the engineers and then the architects, scientists, managers, and head of data. Right, going back into our file, we have the non-technical skills. So we've covered the tools their abilities and now we have the non-technical skills and here we have communication skills, punctuality, attention to detail, organizational skills, ability to meet deadlines, individual work and teamwork and if we head into our dashboard now to investigate these abilities, if we expand this one and then the non-technical skills and then we start by the individual work. You can see that architects, scientists, and head of data need to be able to work alone individually. Then we have ability to meet deadlines. Again, very important for pretty much everyone. Attention to detail. Again, very important by everyone. Communication skills. We have the head of data, product manager, and then the data scientist organizational skills again these are very important for all individuals who have punctuality and teamwork so these non-technical skills are actually very debatable but we have to put them there because all individuals need to have some of these non-technical skills the last skill we have here is advanced skills so strategic thinking leadership and business development Again, for some of these roles, these three are very important. And if we look to compare them into the advanced skills, we expand this one. So business development, the head of data is actually gonna be doing a lot of business development, followed by the data scientist, the product manager, and some of the data architect. Then we have leadership. Here we have the head of data, again, is gonna to have to lead the way. Then we have data architects and then data scientists and product managers. And into strategic thinking, we have again, the head of data, the more experienced person. And then we have the architect, product manager, and then the scientist and the database manager. 
Right, so we've covered all the skills and the tools that we need in all data teams. Uh, I'm gonna post this online. I'm gonna have the link in the video description so you can come into this dashboard and experiment yourself. Don't get too hung up on the numbers, please, because as I said, it depends from the company you're gonna join and the role you're gonna be in. These numbers are just baselines based on my experience and what I think the requirements should be. And if you have different views or different experiences, then please let me know in the comments below. And um, this is it for this video. I hope you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, then please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Thank you very much for watching this video.